Good evening, I'm Scott Beadle with St. George News at 8. Additional charges of felony child abuse have been levied against a Tokerville woman. Here's the latest in the case. Two more charges of felony child abuse have been added to the charges against Tokerville resident Brandy Janes. Janes was arrested in January after her son was taken to the hospital by his father and was found to be severely malnourished. She is accused of keeping her son locked away in a bathroom for over a year and starving him until his father took him to the hospital. Janes appeared in 5th District Court through a video feed from the county jail Monday. The deputy Washington County attorney said the new charges are the result of continued investigation into the case and address the harm her 12-year-old son experienced. Upon further um, evaluation by doctors and psychologists, additional information has developed with regard to the protracted loss of the use of his limbs, specifically his legs, and his ability to walk in a normal fashion for a protracted period of time, in addition to developmental and intellectual delays that were developed while he was in the bathroom and otherwise held captive. Her lawyer, Edward Flint, told the judge he objected to the new charges because he had not yet seen documentation from the state supporting them. The judge gave Flint 10 days to respond to the new charges. What I'm going to have to do is look at the state's amended information in, in greater detail to see what these three separate theories are, if they're elaborated fully in the amended information. If not, I can ask for a bill of particulars ask the state to give me more information for each separate count and what specific facts they say relate to that specific count. It also kind of gives rise to the need for a medical expert early on rather than post-preliminary hearing. I'm going to have to ask for an expert early on to examine this evidence and, and help me prepare for preliminary hearing. We'll wait to see if the defense um, files that motion to challenge the amended information and then the state will, will litigate that issue and then the next step beyond that would be the preliminary hearing. A Beaver County man recently sentenced for multiple second degree felonies is now missing. Robert Allen Hawkins did not check into jail on Monday after a judge granted him a week to get his affairs in order before going to prison. Hawkins was sentenced on March 14th to 1 to 15 years in the Utah State Prison for several drug dealing charges. A warrant has been issued and Hawkins has been listed under Beaver County's Most Wanted. He is 6 feet tall, about 240 pounds, has a light complexion, blue eyes, and a stocky build. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to call the Beaver County Sheriff's Office at 435-438-2862 or calling 911. The Bureau of Land Management will begin removing pinyon and juniper trees in the Three Peaks Recreation Area starting April 1st to reduce the risk of wildfires. About 307 acres of invasive pinyon and juniper trees will be removed mechanically from the recreation area. Approximately 45 small wildfires have occurred in the area over the past 10 years, BLM Fire Mitigation Specialist Nick Howell says. The tree removal project will help reduce fire risk and protect nearby homes in Cedar City Enoch and other neighboring communities, as well as the recreation area itself. The project is in the second phase of a multi-year effort by the BLM Color Country District to restore rangeland west of Cedar City and the Cedar Valley Estate Subdivision. The project is also designed to improve watershed conditions. The Washington County Children's Justice Center is excited to host Dancing with Your Community Stars. The fundraising event is Saturday at 7 p.m. at Snow Canyon High School in St. George. Based on the popular reality show Dancing with the Stars, Saturday's event will feature stars of the St. George area community dancing with an experienced partner or professional aiming to win the dancing trophy and raise funds for the Justice Center. It was another busy day for President Trump who traveled to Capitol Hill today to try and close the deal on the GOP health care plan. But the president still has not commented on the bombshell revelation that the FBI is investigating his campaign and alleged contacts with Russia. Kenneth Moten has the latest from Washington. President Trump back on the Hill. The businessman trying to close the deal on the GOP's American Health Care Act. Can you get the vote, Mr. President? So. No mention of what happened just 24 hours before. FBI Director James Comey's public revelation. His agency is investigating the Trump campaign's alleged contact with Russia as the Kremlin meddled in the election. It includes investigating the nature of any links between individuals associated with the Trump campaign and the Russian government and whether 
there was any coordination. Between Comey wouldn't reveal who is under investigation. Democrats on the House Intelligence Committee dropping names like campaign chairman Paul Manafort, who was fired over the summer. Paul Manafort, who played a very limited role for a very limited amount of time, but beyond. He was, he but was the chairman of the hey, campaign. Hey, John, Jonathan, hold on. Manafort has repeatedly denied any connection to Russia or the DNC hack. So has Trump ally Roger Stone. To make it clear, I have no relationship with the Russians. Comey also came out strong against President Trump's unsubstantiated claims that President Obama wiretapped him. So President Obama could not unilaterally order a wiretap of anyone? No president could. Supporters at Trump's red state rally in Kentucky last night questioned Comey's credibility. I think he's lost a lot of trust with a lot of Americans. Chief Meteorologist Chris Summers has your Southern Utah forecast next. The weather tonight is brought to you by Ermitas, the best tacos in Utah. And welcome back, everyone. A good Tuesday evening to you. Another warm one out there today here in southern Utah. Temperatures into the upper 70s to low 80s in most areas. Not quite as warm as we saw yesterday, but still seeing some pretty nice weather here, too, as temperatures continue to be well above average for this time of year. High temperature today in Mesquite, 84 degrees, 81 degrees down in Las Vegas, 81 degrees also the high here in St. George. Cedar City saw a high of 68 degrees late this afternoon. Now as we head into your Wednesday, then a little bit of rain moves into the area. Here's your city, uh, Cedar City forecast for our Wednesday. Temperature is not quite as warm either, so we'll be back in the mid 60s with a chance for a few showers in our area throughout the day. Again, west southwest winds a little gusty like we saw today. Could see the gust as high as 25 miles per hour on uh, Wednesday afternoon. Now for St. George temperatures once again, uh, not quite as warm as today either back into the 70s with a pretty good chance of rain moving in by late in the afternoon hours. Otherwise, just mostly cloudy skies. Again, those winds will be a little gusty out of the north northwest, but could switch around to the southwest by five o'clock in the afternoon. Again, seeing temperatures uh, about 10 degrees colder than we saw today, putting our highs back close to 70 in southern Utah for our Wednesday afternoon. So cloudy skies again, breezy and a little bit cooler. A few scattered showers and thunderstorms around the area as you go through the day. Looks like the best chance of that will be later in the afternoon. For your Wednesday, keep a little bit of rain in the forecast for your Thursday. Could be heavy rain in some areas, something to keep an eye on, that's for sure. But we definitely do need the rain here. We've been very dry here about the last 10 to 14 days. So it will be nice to get a little bit of rain back in our forecast. We'll turn a little bit chillier, though, for Thursday. And then by the time we get to Friday into the weekend, a little sunshine returns. But again, temperatures also start to warm up a little bit, too. At least getting back a little bit above average by the end of the work week and into the upcoming weekend. So here's a look at our surface map again for your Wednesday. Again, seeing the green area on the map indicating some shower activity pushing its way back into parts of southern Utah, also back into parts of Nevada, also into Arizona too, seeing some showers. The heavier rain will stay to our west for Wednesday. Again, seeing that heavier rain along the coast of California from San Francisco all the way down to Los Angeles, Tito showers and thunderstorms in the area. But that will eventually get here on Thursday, bringing some heavy rain to the area. And in the higher elevations, could see a little bit of light snow develop too as that system moves through on Thursday afternoon. But for tonight, we'll fall back into the mid 40s in Cedar City, 45 degrees, a low temperature there. there. Otherwise, everyone basically in the mid 50s for lows as we wake up on Wednesday morning. Now some rain in the forecast again looks like the best rain chance will be in the late afternoon hours. 64 degrees a high Cedar City near 70 by St. George. See a high temperature at 72 in Mesquite and 68 degrees a high in Hurricane for your Wednesday afternoon. Here's your seven day forecast for Cedar City. Again, some rain around the area for your Wednesday, but that rain could change a little bit of snow as you get to Thursday. High temperatures on Thursday only in the 40s, 46 degrees Thursday afternoon around Cedar City. Another rain chance for Saturday. Again, temperatures stay in the 50s and looks like mid 50s in Cedar City through early next week. St. George seven day forecast showing temperatures close to 70 as we head into our Wednesday with a little bit of rain around, keeping that rain around once again on Thursday. And again, could see some heavier rain across uh, parts of our, of our area too. Thursday looks like the coldest day right now in southern Utah as temperatures basically stay in the upper 50s to low 60s. And as we get to early next week, then back into the mid 60s with some rain chances continuing through the weekend. All right, thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. Still ahead, no one at this next school has to worry about being left out for the prom. Next, details on a tradition that leaves no one dateless for the big event. It is prom season, and an Illinois high school is keeping up with a long-standing tradition there. At a Quinn Catholic High School in Freeport, students determine their prom dates by a random drawing. 
Yeah, the boys draw the names of girls at random in the library, while the girls wait in the gym. Then the boys come out and perform a skit before they reveal who their date is. This is the 91st annual prom draw. I think that's a great idea. Have a fun way to do yeah, it. Yeah, a fun way to do it. Great, great way, actually. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great night.